Coming up in this episode of Rebel Report, we look over the results of the Roman main event basketball tournament featuring our running Rebels. Then we go over a full week of Golden Knights action. Then, finally, UNLV Volleyball reaches the end of the season with Senior Night. Welcome to Studio B on the campus of UNLV. This is the Rebel Report. I'm Emmett Kenny. I'm Siobhan Bauman. Before we dive into the local sports news of the week, we want to tell you what we're all about and what we hope to give you watching at home. Every week for half hour, we will cover UNLV athletics, the games, the events, the athletes, and the coaches. But we're also here to cover all of the major sporting events happening in Southern Nevada and tell stories you won't see anywhere else. Let's begin with our top story. UNLV basketball took up to the hardwood in a new building this past week as the Roman Rebels hosted the fourth-ranked Wolverines and Wichita State inside T-Mobile Arena. Starting off Friday night, we jump into some Bryce Hamilton highlights to close out the first half against Michigan. Hamilton here works down low Michigan big man Hunter Dickinson and gets the fadeaway bucket to drop. Another possession, Hamilton works his way into the lane protecting the rock and laying it in. To close the half, Hamilton drills a three to cut a Michigan lead down to three at halftime. Late in the second half, UNLV trying to work on a comeback find William Nuga with this difficult lay-in through traffic. UNLV would just not be able to keep up though as Hunter Dickinson proves why he's one of the best bigs in the country as he gets this bucket to fall and Michigan would ride a 74-61 victory. More UNLV hoops came Sunday night as the Shockers and Runnin' Rebels battled it out and a game ended in controversy. Forward to UNLV down one with 10 seconds left, Keyshawn Gilbert with a putback layup gives the Rebels the lead. But on the next possession, Shocker possession blocked a blocking call, foul call on Gilbert would send the Shockers scoring leader Tyson Etienne to the line to knock down game-winning free throws. Etienne had 28 points in a 74-73 win. Here is what kept Kevin Kruger's had to say. Yeah, I mean, obviously stings. Uh, stings anytime you're in a close game. You know, you, you feel the opposite way when you're on the, the winning side and you feel uh, pretty bad and, and tough on the losing side. But good fight. Obviously a great program, uh, great team, great culture, Wichita. So uh, proud of the guys for the fight, the growth through these two games and uh, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with two established programs. Uh, Hopefully, it can be a uh, kind of a, a vote of confidence almost, even though we, we don't do the moral victories, but uh, just uh, as anything, kind of give them as a group, you know, an outlook. Uh, so for every day in practice going forward, because uh, these last two certainly had an NCAA tournament environment and feel to it. And I think, uh, you know, going forward, we can, we can kind of have that and have this experience to, to just get better. The Running Rebels' next matchup this week will be Whittier College and number two ranked UCLA. The Lady Rebels matched up against Southern Utah at the Cox Pavilion. We have Christian for that coverage. This is Rebel Report, and I'm Christian Frias here with the recap of the blowout game against Southern Utah. The fans were in attendance for the game to cheer on the Lady Rebels, and boy, they came out hot. Shooting the three ball gave them an early lead to the game and it didn't stop there. The Rebels were also going up strong in the paint and making some tough baskets. The Rebels bench was also cooking tonight. They combined for 48 of UNLV's 92 points, 16 of 38 rebounds, and 14 of 27 assists. Samantha Johnson led the Thunderbirds with 14 points and tried to make a push to close the gap, but didn't have enough to keep up. Six Lady Rebels ended in double figures Essence Booker finished with 16 points on 6 of 8 shooting and totaled 6 of 6 with 0 turnovers. And you can't forget about preseason All-Mountain West sophomore center Desiree Young who scored 11 points in only 14 minutes. Yes, I said 14 minutes. I know the Lady Rebels get excited when she's on the court. UNLV set season high in points scored, field goals made, assists, and steals. 
Guard Kira Jackson dished a game high seven assists without a turnover and set a season high of 10 points and four steals. The Rebels had an amazing performance all around and showed the fans why they should keep coming to their games. The Lady Rebels will host its annual Thanksgiving Classic at the Cox Pavilion on Saturday, November 27th and Sunday, November 28th. UNLV football hosted nationally ranked San Diego State in its final home game of the regular season. The Rebels look to add another win after getting their first two wins of the season. Reporter Alex Wright has the recap of the game. UNLV rode its two-game win streak into its final home game of the season against number 19 San Diego State. The Rebels struck first on an opening drive field goal, but the Aztecs took the lead after a deflected pass landed in the hands of Andrew Alexi. After an injury to starting quarterback Cameron Friel, Justin Rogers came off the bench and made an immediate impact. Rogers connected with Zyel Griffin on a 43-yard touchdown pass that gave UNLV the lead back. But two more San Diego State touchdowns late in the second half put the Aztecs ahead 21-10 going into halftime. UNLV made it a one-score game on a touchdown pass from Rogers to Gio Faolo, and another Daniel Gutierrez field goal made the deficit 21-20 for the Rebels. Late in the fourth quarter, San Diego State added one more touchdown to go up 28-20, and picked off Rodgers on UNLV's final drive to take the win. Head coach Marcus Arroyo spoke about his team's resiliency after the close loss and how excited he is to finish the year off strong. We expect to win those games, okay? Um, expect to win all those games, especially against good opponents, because at the end of the day, we got to find a way. And um, these guys have fought. They've been tough. They're growing. Um, they're resilient. They've got a bunch of pride in their locker room, and uh, we got another week to fight. And uh, I'm fired up to be a right next to them, shoulder to shoulder. So we want to finish that. We've got to execute a little better and in all three phases, obviously, against a good football team. The Rebels close out the season on November 26th to battle Air Force in Colorado Springs. For Rebel Report, I'm Alex Wright. The Cincinnati Bengals came to Allegiant Stadium on Sunday to face off with the Las Vegas Raiders. Three minutes into the first quarter, Joe Burrow fumbles and the ball is recovered by the Raiders. Bengals kick for three to tie the game. Raiders kicker Daniel Carlson makes a 47-yard field goal to make it 6-3 Raiders. With the second period winding down, Burrow to Mixon, touchdown Bengals. 10-6 Bengals at the end of the half. 19-yard touchdown pass from Carr to Foster Morrow to make it 16-13 in the fourth quarter. The Bengals then take over the game, scoring two more touchdowns and a field goal. Final score 32-13, and Cincinnati hands the Raiders their third consecutive loss. Here's what Raiders quarterback Derek Carr had to say following the game. Well, we came out flat. It was terrible. Um, there's no beating around it. I mean, it's just, you know, the um, last couple of weeks we just take turns, you know, and uh, just really out of sync right now, and it's not, it, no one's coming to save us, so we better figure it out. The Vegas Golden Knights played the Carolina Hurricanes at Vegas on Thursday, November 16th. The first period started out with no goals for the first 11 minutes, but it was Tony D'Angelo of the Hurricanes that scored the first goal shortly after that. Sebastian Ajo scored off a power play, giving the Hurricanes a 2-0 lead. The Golden Knights started to come back in the second period when Brett Howden skated past the Hurricanes defense to score the first goal for the Golden Knights. Later in the second period, Shea Theodore scored a goal after rebounding a shot off the Hurricanes goalie, Antti Ranta. Unfortunately for the Golden Knights, their scoring streak would not continue into the third period. Seth Jarvin scored a late goal to end the game to take a 3-2 lead for the Hurricanes. Not even a minute after the Hurricanes, Vincent Trocek scored a goal to secure the Hurricanes win. The final score was 4-2. This is what the Golden Knights head coach, Peter DeBoer, had to say about the loss. Uh, you have to give credit to them. Very good team. Uh, they, they really put a lot of pressure on you. Don't give you a lot. Um, you know, we didn't grab uh, momentum. We, we had an opportunity there at 2-2 with a couple chances to maybe get a lead, which maybe changes the game. We had a little mini breakaway and a couple looks around the net on the power play. Um, you know, um, that might have grabbed some momentum, but, uh, you know, they, they were the better team, and in this league you usually get what you deserve. The Golden Knights look to bounce back from their loss to Carolina with their second meeting against the Detroit Red Wings. After a scoreless first period dominated by the Red Wings, the Golden Knights found their footing in the second period with four goals. 
The Golden Knights got two goals from Zach Whitecloud in his return to the lineup and also got goals from Nicholas Haig and newcomer Paul Kyer. Riley Smith added another goal in the third period to stretch the lead and seal a 5-2 victory over the Red Wings, improving their record on the homestand to 4-1. Here is what head coach Pete DeBoer had to say about the importance of the homestand. I think we started uh, to turn things around with, with some big road wins. I think that started rolling the confidence in, in Dallas, uh, in Colorado, um, and then you know splitting that trip through Canada and back, but um, you know it, it was nice going through what we've gone through being at home because you know our fans give us an, a boost too. It gives us some extra energy. It's easier at home, you know, to control some of the matchups uh, when you've got a, a lighter lineup uh, than it is on the road. So you know, I think I think all those things have, have helped for sure. Saturday night, the Golden Knights look to stay hot, taking on the Columbus Blue Jackets. With early first period goals by Gustav Nyquist and Alexander Texier, the Golden Knights found themselves in a 2-0 hole early. Midway through the second, Keegan Colasar scored his first goal of the year, making the game 2-1. Early in the third period, Riley Smith scored a shorthanded goal for the Golden Knights, tying it up to two apiece. Late in the third, Matthias Janmark scored what would be the game-winning Golden Knights win, the game-winning goal, Golden Knights win 3-2. Head coach Pete DeBoer spoke on the team's hot homestand. I mean, 5-1 and one on a homestand when you're f full roster and fully healthy is a, is a great run. So uh, considering the adversity we've kind of had thrown at us, um, even up till tonight, I mean, we had a false positive with Howden before the game, and that's why he was out there late. So it's just been one thing after another, but... Uh, the group's resiliency, I've talked about it before, um, you know, never wavered. I th the Golden Knights look to get healthier as Pete DeBoer officially announced that Max Pacioretty is now day-to-day. -day. Next up, we talk football, including our Las Vegas Raiders and Rebels football this week's rundown. If you haven't already, make sure to follow our website for more Rebel Report content. Our website can be found at www.rebelreportunlv.com. There you will be able to find all the articles and videos written and produced by our students, as well as exclusive stories you won't find anywhere else. Oh, thanks, man. No problem, man. Are you interested in sports? Yeah, man. How'd you know? Well, obviously you're shooting hoops, but did you know that Rebel Report covers basketball? What's Rebel Report? Well, Rebel Report is a student-run organization that covers all sports. So, like, we cover football. And we also cover volleyball. We also cover hockey and many other sports. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of sports. Well, now that you know, you can check out Rebel Report for all your sports content. Oh, okay. Well, I'll check it out. <laughs> what am I going to do with all this? What's up, everyone, and welcome to another edition of The Rundown. I'm Brandon Steele alongside Jared Thompson talking UNLV football and Las Vegas Raiders football today on this segment. Holiday season, Thanksgiving, always the time of year where football is prevalent. We'll start it off with the Las Vegas Raiders coming off of three straight losses now, Jared. You were at the game against Cincinnati. What was that like being in the building, seeing the Raiders drop another one? Well, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't disappointing with how the last few weeks have gone with the Raiders. And being there watching it, I think I can say for most fans, it just seems like like lifeless right now, especially on offense. And at the beginning of the year, the offense was so good. Carr at the top of the leaderboards and passing yards. And they had one drive where they went down in three plays, 75 yards. But other than that, it was just like nothing. And it it's Raider fans, we've seen this too many times the last few years. Where they get off to a good start. Your expectations get a little high. Could this be the year? And then they come crashing down again. And you wonder if maybe the Gruden situation, then Ruggs, then Damon Arnett that doesn't get talked about a lot. All these things, it's just maybe it's just too much for them to handle. But I think the disappointing part was this year, you know, last year the Chiefs lost one regular season game. 
they didn't really get Raiders didn't get an opportunity to go win that division. This year, the Chiefs have four losses, and it seems like when they're in their little funk a few weeks ago, the Raiders really had an opportunity to try to you know get grabs of this division and possibly you know have a run to win it. And now they're not out of it, sitting at five and five, but it's just. It's the way they're playing with the Cowboys and Chiefs up next. It's not looking good. Right, yeah, you mentioned the Raiders 5-5, five and five, still technically in the mix, but there's a lot of teams in the mix, Jared. I mean, you have the Cincinnati Bengals, you have the Los Angeles Chargers, who the Raiders have to play again on January 9th, and the offense is sputtering right now. It does have a lot to do with the coaching, obviously. Anytime that you lose a head coach, the offense coordinator, Greg Olson, now calling those plays. Continuity starting to get a little shaky here, as we saw in the press conference. Derek Carr said they came out flat. Interim head coach, Coach Rich Passaccia, said, oh, they played with great energy. So a lot of confusion going on as the Raiders get ready for Thanksgiving. Uh, the, the next coming games, as Jared said, Dallas, Kansas City, and then Washington. None of those games are really easy for the Las Vegas yeah. Raiders. It's going to be a tough fight if they want to get that seventh seed in the playoffs. So the Raiders season still a work in progress, sitting at 5-5, five and five, but UNLV football coming to an end. Last game of the season will be this Saturday against Air Force, who's a surprise team, Jarrett, sitting at 8-3. and three. Yeah, and you look at UNLV's record, oh, you know, obviously a lot of losses, but you really can't, you have to be excited with how the season has ended. That first win against New Mexico, really, it feels like it's just like they got that monkey off the bat of the first win with the Royal, because since then it's been a different team. And yeah, you can say the wins, New Mexico, Hawaii, maybe not the greatest competition, but they were in that game until the final minute against San Diego State and lost by eight. And the defense has been balling. I mean, Ricky Johnson with a few interceptions, that defense, it, again, it's like a different team, it feels like. And then riding Charles Williams, I mean, all day, it's working. And like you said, Air Force, gonna be a tough battle. But I think the season kind of played out well for UNLV because it's cool they got two wins back to back and then you get a nice little test at the end of the season okay how far along are we yeah we got the first win but going into next year obviously people forget Arroyo the top two recruiting classes in the Mountain West like it's coming and now you get to test yourself with this squad where he can really see who he likes who he wants who's going to keep their starting roles next year with some tough competition against SDSU and now Air Force this weekend. Right, Jared and very great points there when you look at the season as a whole here for UNLV football the schedule is very difficult, but they stayed in They stayed in games against UTSA, who's still ranked. They had Iowa State, which was kind of like, hey, you know, this is what power conference football looks like. How can we get ready? They had a great game against Fresno State, who was at the top, one of the hottest teams in the Mountain West. Obviously, a lot has changed there, but to your point, they're building and they're getting ready. You talk about the recruiting class. We talk about Kyle Williams, who was Mountain West Freshman of the Year last year. He put together another great season. Steve Jenkins as well. Quarterback. They're still figuring it out. We will see if it's Doug Brumfield or Cameron Friel on Saturday. And another thing that I think that goes overlooked is how well Marcus Royal, I think, has coached the team. Because obviously he's a leader. He's going to be there for his guys. But he's also showing how he wants to win the game. Cameron Friel started seven, eight games in a row, something like that. And he struggled against SDSU. And Royal pulled him. He's like, I'm not here to just let you have the job. you got to perform. So he puts in Rodgers, and Rodgers made some good throws. So it'll be interesting to see how that develops going forward as well. Right, yeah, and Cameron Field being a freshman, we will see if he's going to continue to build this relationship with Coach Arroyo. And that'll wrap it up. Jared, great talking to you. Some you. Las Vegas football. We'll send it back to the desk for more Rebel Report. Next up, UNLV Volleyball celebrates senior night with their final game of the season against the Nevada Wolfpack. Nine kills for Kate Brennan off of 13 total attempts. Hey, Alex, you ready to record the podcast? Yeah, Barry, I'm ready. Let's get it going. All right, sounds good. In three, two, one. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Rebel Report podcast for another edition of What They Did Right with Alex Wright. I'm Brandon Steele talking UNLV football. Alex, what did you think of last week's game? Alex? Oh, Alex? my bad, Brandon. I was uh, looking up on Rebel Report's website. They got a ton of new content, VGK. The Ra Raiders, Golden Knights, UNLV football. They got a ton of stuff, new articles that just were published today. All right, man. Sounds good. No worries. So I guess we'll go ahead and just redo the intro for our podcast. All right, here we go. Here we go. Three, two, one. What's up, everyone? And welcome to the Rebel Report podcast. I am Brandon Steele alongside Alex Wright for another edition of What They Did Right. How you doing today, Alex? Alex, you good, man? What's going on? Oh, my bad, Brandon. I, I just saw they posted the latest episode of Rebel Report. It's up right now on their YouTube page and their Facebook page. Oh, a new one's out now? Yeah. 
All right, all right. So we might have to wrap this up and go watch that episode, man. Yeah, I think that'd be a good idea. Get caught up on what's happening at UNLV and Las Vegas sports. Then get back to our podcast. Make sure it gets posted on the Rebel Report website. UNLV Volleyball concluded its regular season last weekend. The reigning Mountain West champions played their final home games of the season last week. Saturday night's game against UNR was a little bit more special for the seniors on the team. Alex Wright has more. UNLV Volleyball sent out its seniors in dominant fashion, taking down the UNR Wolfpack in three sets. The Rebels never trailed the entire match and ended the regular season on a five-game win streak. The highlight of the night took place after the game when UNLV honored its four seniors, Marina Hayden, Lauren Burt, Kate Brennan, and Milica Tasich. Head coach Don Sullivan has helped lead the rebuild of UNLV volleyball into a championship team, but she credits her seniors for making her vision reality. Right, and so they took a program that essentially finished last and to win in uh, Mountain West last year, last year and this week, this year, competing for it, and I'm just very proud of each of them. Brennan, who had 10 kills against UNR, was grateful for the night and support from the fans. Very emotional. We had probably our biggest crowd of the whole entire season, and it's just amazing that all these people came out to support us, and the videos, my team at the end, like, that was, that meant the world to me, so it's, it's, it was great. Perfect night. Hayden came back to UNLV to use her extra year of eligibility from the COVID-impacted season. She said playing with her teammates one more time was a key factor in her return. Coming back and getting to play with Kate and Lauren, they were some of my best friends from the start. I remember when they were freshmen, and they're some of the main reasons why I stayed and played this season. The Rebels finished the 2021 season with a 21-8 record and in fourth place in the Mountain West. For Rebel Report, I'm Alex Wright. Dating back to 2019, the Rebels have won 50 of their last 61 matches. UNLV will play to defend its Mountain West Championship at the conference tournament at the Cox Pavilion. Next up, we talk UNLV women's sports with the Lady Rebels and UNLV Volleyball. Don't forget to check out our weekly podcast on Spotify. Every week, we break down all the big sports stories happening in Las Vegas, including the Rebels, Raiders, Golden Knights, and much more. They're both 2 to start volleyball, swept their weekend series, so they won, and they also qualified for the Mountain West uh, Championships, so they'll have a shot to defend their... Where are you getting that from? What, the song? Yeah, you've been humming it all day. It's the UNLV fight song and the Rebel Report theme song for last year. Rebel Report? What's that? You don't know what the Rebel Report is? Nope. It's a student-run program all about Las Vegas sports. It goes from UNLV sports to the Knights, Raiders, Aces, and more. Really? Does it go over a little bit of other stuff too? Yeah, everything to do with Las Vegas and sports, and sports in general. I love Vegas. That sounds perfect for me. Yeah, let's put it on. Awesome, let's go. Everyone's humming it. I mean, it is pretty catchy. <laughs> Tired of boring sports talk shows that don't even cover the Las Vegas area? Want a sports show that's available for you at any time? Well, you're in luck because Rebel Report is just for you. The Rebel Report covers all the local sports stories in the Las Vegas area. You can visit their website at rebelreportunlv.com where you can find all of the student-written and produced stories, shows, interviews, and much more. You can also visit their YouTube channel at Rebel Report UNLV for shows and exclusive interviews. The Rebel Report is the way to go for Las Vegas sports.
UNLV hosts its annual Thanksgiving Round Robin Tournament at the Cox Pavilion this weekend. The Lady Rebels will host Kansas City Grambling and UT Arlington for this weekend's Thanksgiving Classic. The Lady Rebels will, put, will play UT Arlington on Saturday, November 27th and play Grambling on Sunday, November 28th. Tip-off for both games is at noon with the successive games to follow at 2.30 p.m. Come support our Lady Rebels this weekend. The UNLV volleyball team defends their championship title this week in the start of the 2021 Mountain West Volleyball Championship Tournament. The Rebels will take on the New Mexico Lobos to start the tournament this week. The Rebels swept their regular season series against New Mexico with two four-set sweeps. The winner of UNLV's match against the Lobos will, play, will go on to play in the semifinals against number one seed Colorado State. UNLV come into the tournament on a five-match win streak. The Rebels look to keep the hot streak alive to defend their Mountain West Championship this week. That will do it for this episode of Rebel Report. Have a good weekend.